Salvete Ayubio Spectatoris Optimus and welcome to this city of Rodeus. So in previous episodes I've worked on the construction of the Mausoleum of Olus Rodeus, the Rodean Forum, the Temple of Concordia and the Circus Maximus. Now in this episode it's going to be one of those smaller little projects. I'm going to be working on um, kind of facsimile of the Temple of the Vestal Virgins, uh, which also existed in the ancient city of Rome, but it's one of the key things that I want to add also in the Rodean capital. Now here we can see an overview of the, the general site, the general area of the archaeological park, which I'm currently working on adding some ruins and some other buildings that have been maintained over the centuries because the, the Rodean Imperial is uh, still a, uh, an empire essentially so it's, uh, it's, it's still maintained most of its buildings um, but I'm going with the feel that the, the ruins are actually from the First Republic which happened sometime before the Imperial um, empire basically existed. So we can see two of these actually in the, uh, the Rodian, uh, Rodian uh, forum. So uh, yeah we can see a number of buildings here. So the site that I've chosen is this sort of triangular area uh, between the, the great statue and the Temple of Concordia. Uh, and one of the ruins. So this is the general area that I'm going to be building upon in, uh, in today's episode and uh, creating the Temple of Vestal Virgins. Now before uh, uh, you, can, you can see me enjoying uh, building this lovely little site, I thought I'd just read a little bit about the actual one in Rome to give you a sense of uh, what I'm, I'm kind of creating in today's uh, episode. Okay, so we have the House of the Vestal Virgins. The House of the Vestal Virgins, which rose immediately adjacent to the Temple of Vesta, was the home and official residence of the priestesses charged with guarding the sacred fire that burned in the temple and performing the rites connected with the cult of the hearth. The Vestal Virgins were six in number. They entered as novices between the age of six and ten, and remained for 30 years under the vows of strict chastity. They were chosen by the supreme religious authority of the state, the Pontifex Maximus. The first and only, at first only even, patricians were eligible, but later they could be chosen also from the plebeian families. The Vestal Virgins received a rich dowry from the state, and they were allowed, uh, or allotted, every honour including that of being accompanied by the course a privilege they shared with the consuls. Such was their sacred dignity that if by chance their path happened to cross that of a condemned criminal, he was automatically reprieved. But they also lived under the menace of tremendous punishment, for any priestess who allowed the fire to go out or become untrue to her vow of chastity would be buried alive with a loaf of bread and a lamp in a small underground chamber in the field of the wicked just outside the walls of the Quirinal. The house which has or has been considered as the prototype of present day monastic con convents <laughs> was organised around a large courtyard kept as a garden and surrounded on all sides by a portico. All of the rooms opened onto these galleries, which also gave access to the other environments in the house, including the quarters of the servants. Self-sufficient in every respect, the house was well appointed and one can still recognise the kitchen, the flour mill and the ovens. The private rooms were situated on the upper floor, complete with baths and heating facilities, while one of while one of long sides of the ground floor included a cicalum. Dedicated to the tutelary guards, it was flanked by three rooms on either side, the offices of the six Vestal Virgins. 
The large room on the opposite side is thought to have been a triclinium. I think I'm saying that correctly. So yeah, incredibly interesting in terms of the religious aspect of ancient Rome. So that's something that I'm kind of recreating here. Probably minus the burying alive part, I would like to think that um, over the centuries that kind of practice has become a little bit outlawed in the Rodian Imperium. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that that's actually uh, uh, an occurrence in, in the ancient um, Rodian uh, city. So here you can see that I'm just um, adding or trying to add different uh, elevations for the actual um, temple of the Vestal Virgins. Now, my original idea, um, which I'm kind of going towards here, is I wanted it multi-layered. So I wanted it to be sort of like a pedestal, like three, at least three different kinds of levels going up to the actual temple, because I'm aware that around the site presently, it's still kind of flat. There's not a great deal of elevation um, and as I progress through the series I want to add a lot more I guess depth by adding different kinds of layer heights for each of these um, buildings or areas to give it a nice I don't know just an, a nice quality is what I'm trying to go for um, so here um, I know what I want to create so it's just trying to make this thing actually uh, come true and happen <laughs> so here I'm working on the, the very first uh, level. Um, in a way it's kind of inspired by uh, a structure that is located in one of my uh, in one of the parks uh, near me um, which have uh, this kind of multiple level with like staircases um, on either side going up. Um, it's not quite as curved as the thing that I have in mind for this project but it's uh, somewhat reminiscent um, and I'm so glad that I went for these Monaco retaining walls um, rather than the original ones I was thinking of going for because the the kind of architecture on the top of the walls um, you know it, it just looks really elegant and, and quite exquisite so it's definitely something that I'm really, really happy about um, and now working out where the stairs are going to go where the steps going to go on either side um, you know, am I going to have like a narrow entrance for people to come in or a wide one? You know, I want it to be somewhat impressive. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of deciding here that you know, it needs to be uh, wider and I kind of want the actual steps going into uh, the temple to be in the middle but at a higher level. Uh, so it kind of draws your attention upwards but then it's kind of flanked by these, uh, these, these steps going to the sides. Um, which I think looks, or, or will look, um, really, really nice. Um, so here using this ploppable asphalt to, uh, again, add, uh, another level, um, above the main one below. And then of course you've got the actual temple, which also is another level above that. So it's creating this three pedestals or, or, or three levels the entire structure which uh, I think it's good I'm, 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 I'm very happy with uh, with that um, yeah so uh, yeah I'm just kind of going around filling this all in um, yeah um, but I keep noticing that there's um, I'm not sure you call it it's like a glitch essentially where uh, two textures or two props kind of intersect and it kind of creates this kind of flashing effect um, but I mean that's kind of easily solved so I've got the main structure here um, so now it's time for some detailing work by adding some of the posts uh, at the top here um, then at the bottom which is kind of typical for these kind of flanked staircases going up um, in the middle there's some kind of centerpiece now originally I was going to go with this um, um, kind of jutted out structure at the bottom with maybe some statues on the top but I think I'll replace that later with uh, like a fountain I think um, or, or something like that um, and now just adding these planters which are going to be around the outside of the upper level 
um, and then later I'll add some actual planters closer to the temple um, in the middle and then in between um, I'm thinking probably just your standard um, um, immunity kind of things like benches, um, bins or trash cans, uh, lamp posts, things of that nature but it always surprises me how how detail um, really makes something just come to life and I think that the more detail uh, you have it's probably not good for your CPU or graphics card but um, you know the, the better I think it looks and these uh, benches are from the Versailles uh, collection which you can get in the or on the workshop which look very impressive in my opinion and I think it, they just go really really well here together um, I would have liked perhaps to have had uh, a different kind of decal or something for the uh, the levels rather than this kind of concretey kind of color and it's something I might revisit um, in the future um, but yeah it, it, it creates a little bit of a headache because um, it, it might create some kind of overlap uh, with, with, with other decals so I've just got to be very careful with that at the moment it looks clean it looks tidy it looks neat and it works so I'm happy <laughs> at the moment with that um, yeah so I suppose uh, at this stage I'm looking for some other things like statues I was thinking lions here that would look uh, very pretty and I suppose I could have changed them into a procedural object and just decrease their size but I thought actually I'll just I'll just go with um, some other sculptures um, rather than the lions and I'm, I'm very happy actually because I thought well these sculptures are of women and it's the temple of Vestal Virgins <laughs> um, well I mean you know you could I suppose you could have some male um, virgins I mean I'm not going to outrule that you know it's uh, you know we live in the 21st century equal opportunities and all that <laughs> so maybe um, but I suppose it's just, maybe it's just there for you know traditionally um, you know maybe it's just it's been there for a very long 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 time and uh, you know maybe no male statues have yet been created but never say never in Rodea so um, yeah and I absolutely love these uh, lampposts by, uh, oh gosh, I keep forgetting, but it's the uh, Garnier. It's a, it's a French, uh, it's from the French um, asset collections that you can, you can find online. It's very easy to find. Just type in Garnier. Um, very pretty. And lots and lots of different kinds of um, yeah, lampposts um, and lighting and things like this. So I figured here I would add some lamps uh, to the tops of these posts. Um, I, I kind of wish that I'd made them a little bit smaller, but you know I'm, I'm I'm happy enough with those, and I think I'll return to that later and just add them around uh, the actual um, temple area. Um, but as it stands, very happy. Um, and here, just uh, just adding some more um, flora around the site and I really wanted these kind of like orange trees uh, around the site because I just, I just thought well imagine that kind of smell of citrus in the air on like a warm or hot summer's day and how kind of inviting that would be if you were a tourist and you know you were up there you know it's very you know aromatic that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> um, now one thing I really want to look for on the on the workshop um, and I have not had any luck yet, but I know it used to be um, there with these uh, kind of animated effects. I really would like to add like f some fire, um, fire kind of props um, to these, um, I can't remember the name, but these kind of like bowl things that the Romans used to use um, at the front. Um, maybe some kind of smoke effect uh, in the middle of the temple kind of coming out from the... Uh, I guess the portal or the, the hole in the, in the middle of the roof just to give that effect that you know the fire is still actually burning 
um, in in the Rodan Imperium, and it still it still needs to be kind of maintained. And I think that would be a really awesome looking um, thing to add, um, which I would definitely return to. Uh, so here I've added the centerpiece at the bottom with the fountain. Um, I'm just going through a few potential choices for the the, the top of this kind of uh, column in the fountain. But uh, I'm not really happy with uh, either of those, to be honest with you. But I've settled on um, this. Uh, this uh, the statue just need to uh, resize it um, and center it on the, uh, the podium, or whatever you call it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that looks uh, quite nice. Just got to move the uh, the steps so this it's equal space on either side of the fountain. So it looks uh, quite symmetrical. And now we're going to add uh, some statues to go around the actual lower level. Um, and I, I suppose this is very reminiscent of the, the statues uh, that you can see in actual Rome around the site of the temple of the um, Vestal Virgins. Um, you still have those, they still exist. Um, so yeah, that's just that's just something I kind of wanted to um, call back to, uh, and yeah, yeah, I, th I think that, that looks quite quite nice. Uh, but I need to add a few more details around the around the sides. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think this uh, looks good. I'm I'm very happy with this. Uh, just to add a few planters between each of the statues going around uh, and then I'll probably plant some junipers maybe I think some junipers or maybe some cypress I think the cypress trees I think um, yeah yeah this is uh, I think that looks rather nice although I think that one's a little bit too too large um, yeah yeah very nice, yeah, I like that. That's uh, that's quite that's quite pretty. Um, of course, we need some tourist information boards, you know, to give information about the the Temple of the Vestal Virgins, but also you know the statues around the site. You know, who are they? Why why does the statue exist? What did they do? What were their accomplishments? Um, and now I just had this brainwave about adding some you know some wall climbers, some kind of like ivy or something. Um, to grow around the, the lower level. I just think it gives it a really nice uh, picturesque, picturesque even uh, setting and uh, not the entirety of the lower base because I think that's kind of you know kind of excessive but uh, it, you know in, in quite a few areas around I think it looks uh, I think it looks quite pretty. And here you can see that I'm adding those uh, those Roman bowls that I was, it's not a bowl, it's really bad, I can't remember the name, um, to the the actual temple at the top here. Um, and that's the effect that I kind of want to um, replace. I actually want the little fire effect that you could get, but you can't get anymore. And um, another idea that I had was uh, to place some kind of, uh, you know, small eatery or, or or place where people can can go to they can buy a drink maybe a snack and you know they can enjoy this this beautiful view of this very old uh, temple and the surrounding area of course you know it's uh, right in the shadow of the the mausoleum it's next to the temple of concordia it's next to the uh, rodean uh, forum so there is plenty around to uh, see and take in as you kind of relax while you uh, drink uh, a nice coffee or you know have a nice nibble on something um, yeah and I've created these these lines of statues also um, because that's exactly what it's like in, in, in Rome itself uh, near the the temple of uh, Vestal Virgins and uh, place these nice planters uh, in between um, but now here is the challenge because I'm like, well, wow, what kind of trees can I put here? Because there is a plethora of trees in the workshop. However, 
they are enormous generally they are absolutely massive and there are some things that procedural objects can do very well but you can't change tree heights it's, it's just not possible they can affect props they can affect buildings but try as I might I've never been able to I don't think it's possible maybe I'm wrong um, but it's it's not been able uh, I'm not I, it's not been something I've been able to do by uh, reducing the size of these uh, these trees so just going through I'm like well this looks really pretty but it's really big <laughs> um, and okay this is a good size but it might spoil the view of uh, the temple if you're walking from the mausoleum and you're heading towards the statue um, then yes it's uh, it's too much so eventually I went for these um, these junipers I thought they're not massive they're not small a few flowers as well scattered in there and I think that looks uh, that looks quite nice because uh, I don't want to ruin the view from from the front I don't mind the sides I don't want to say ruin but I just don't want to obstruct that's what I'm trying to say um, and now just adding these planters to the sides uh, and I will continue adding these around the sides too, and then choosing some uh, a nice varied bunch of uh, uh, of trees. Now I love these kind of palmy kind of trees that you can see in some Mediterranean countries, especially uh, like in in parts of Greece, for example. I saw these kind of palms in uh, roads, which I, I love, by the way. So if anybody if anybody out there has never been to Greece, definitely go. It's you know, it's a beautiful, amazing city, a city, country, <laughs> an amazing country with uh, a wealth of, of history and different kinds of um, landscapes and historical towns and cities to, to, to explore. So I definitely uh, recommend that. Um, yeah, so here, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm... A little bit indecisive with the with the trees I liked those previous ones first but now I'm not happy with those so I went for uh, something different and here I need to add some kind of planters but in uh, kind of like an arc so I worked out that uh, it needs to be about kind of like 16 dashes <laughs> uh, wide uh, from the center of the circle um, and now just deleting the superfluous ones that I don't actually need. And then just add a few um, uh, junipers or uh, cypress trees, um, which I think look wonderful, absolutely wonderful. The Mediterranean feel, you need the kind of like cypress trees or junipers. Um, and also I think it's called the Scots pine, which you'll see in Rome a lot. Um, but of course the ones on the exchange they are very very nice however I only really go for the smallest ones because the other ones are just absolutely ginormous like they're they're, they're huge they, they must be like 12 15 stories high for some of them and I'm like that's a little bit excessive <laughs> like I don't remember seeing any of those when I was in Rome so I'll, I'll go for the smallest ones um, and as I said before just adding these lanterns uh, every second post um, around the site. I just think it looks wonderful. I'm very, very happy with uh, the way that this is uh, turning out. And of course, a nice little magnolia tree there just to uh, set it off. And of course, since we have uh, uh, an eatery, uh, we need places for people to sit down and eat and drink and, uh, and relax. Um, so this area, I know it kind of cuts out to nothing, to oblivion basically, but um, in an upcoming episode, um, this is actually going to be another site of a very, very large building. Um, which I'm not saying anything more about, but that's it's, it's feeding into that. Um, so it's going to be uh, connected to that as well as the Temple of the Vestal Virgins. Um, and there were, I had a few choices for parasols, but I just really wasn't keen on the idea of having a Starbucks next to like a 2000 year old <laughs> monument. It just, uh, there's just something about it that's just screams a little bit tacky. Uh, and on that note, uh, as you can see, I've kind of finished the general area. I think it looks very, very pretty. Uh, I'm very happy with this. Um, 
after this you can see kind of like a flyby as per standard in my videos uh, and if you enjoyed what I've created please like and subscribe um, I would very much appreciate it goodbye for now